Hey guys, Kevin here with eTrailer, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install the Sea level RV tank monitor system. So the Sea level tank monitoring system is going to give you a more precise reading of what your tanks are actually at. So if you look at your older style tank readers, you're going to have a full, a two-thirds, one-third, or empty. That sensor that's in your tank is honestly only going to read you up to one-third. So anything past one-third, it's going to assume that you're empty. Whereas with our new sensors, every inch on here, there's a new sensor. So it's going to give you a more precise reading so that you know, hey, when I hit one third, I'm not actually empty. I still have this much more to go so that I can plan whether I need to dump out my gray or my black tank or if I need to go fill up my freshwater tank. So depending on what kind of system you have, um, with our trailer today, ours is going to monitor our battery, our fresh, our gray, our black and then also power our water pump. But this also comes with other monitors that come without the monitor pump button or will come with a gas button so that you can also monitor how much gas you have. So for this install, you can expect um, it to be fairly straightforward just because we're only replacing a uh, monitoring system that already existed. So we're easily just tapping into those wires. If this was a new build, maybe you have an enclosed trailer and you're adding this in, you'd have to run the wires yourself, but obviously if it's a brand new build, it'd be a little bit easier to run the wires through. Uh, it's fairly simple. All you're doing is hooking up a wiring harness that's going to connect to your monitor and then just splicing those wires together and then splicing your wires running from your sensors over to your monitor. All right, so here's what you're gonna get in your C-level kit. It's gonna come with a monitor, a wiring harness that'll plug right into the back of your monitor for easy hookup into your system. You're gonna have three different strips with it. Uh, these are the 12 inch strips, but this can also come in 16 inch. And what uh, you're gonna have to do, depending on the size of your tank, is you're going to cut right in between the sensors here. One thing I do wanna say though is, as you cut this down to length, you're taking away uh, the sensitivity basically of this. So like your standard tank sensors that are on your RV are going to be basically just three sensors showing one third, two thirds, or full. Whereas this has a sensor about every single inch to give you a more accurate reading of what your tank's actually at. So taking away any of these is gonna cut down that sensitivity, thus giving you less accurate of a reading. So at the top of your strip, you're going to see these little squares here with uh, little indicators for what they are for. Inside of your manual, it's going to show you which ones of these that you're going to cut, depending on the specific tank. Say I was putting this on my gray tank, I would come over and I would cut right through this and cut that little tip off. Uh, same thing for if I was doing it with my black tank. And there's also a fail safe kind of built in so that say I was meaning to put this on my black tank, but I accidentally cut out the gray, um, there's a different piece that we can cut which you can find in your manual, which will make it so that it knows that you're actually wanting to cut the black. All right, so now down under the trailer, we can see we have our three water tanks. We have two black ones and a white one. Our white one is gonna be our fresh water tank. Our two black ones are gonna be our gray tank and our black tank. The easy way to determine which is which, your black tank's gonna have a three inch pipe for its drain, whereas your uh, gray water tanks only gonna have an inch and a quarter so I make it real easy to determine which is which so that you make sure you put the right uh, Sensor on the right tank All right, so before I do any cutting I want to make sure I'm not going to be overlapping off of the tank because it is rounded here in the corner So I think I am gonna have to cut it down just one more piece here Yeah That way we're right dead on with our tank So I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors and trim this last sensor off. Just like that. And then up here, I'm gonna peel back our backing just a bit. I know this is my black tank, so I'm gonna cut off my black tab so that the sensor knows where it's going. As you can see, the wires on each of these are facing over to the right, and it has to be that way. Um, if you go over the sensor to the left, it ends up causing some issues. That is just a uh, little tech tip from C level. So from now, we can figure out where we want to place it on our tank. 
I'm gonna set it pretty close to where my wiring is for our previous probes, which is gonna be right over here, just so that I don't have to run any extra wiring to it. As you can see, we've got one wire coming out here from our cables and it's connecting to our three sensors. So what I'm gonna do is just untwist this because this is gonna connect to our blue wire. Uh, may want to wear some safety glasses or something, especially if your trailer's a little bit older. Get some old debris or anything like that. You don't want that getting in your eyes. Just take that out. And unhook our sensors. Now these you can just cut off and leave. We're not going to be using those sensors anymore once we have this new system in, but it's not going to hurt you to have them in there still. All right, so now that I got my wire cutters, I'm just going to go ahead and snip these off. There's nothing electrical running to this at all, so you don't have to worry about getting a shock or anything like that. So I'm going to put my strip right here. I'm going to try and keep it completely centered and level. That way we get a very accurate read, but you'll simply peel off your backing. As you can see right there, there's the sensors. And we will slap it in place up on our tank. Just make sure you give it a real good press. Try not to touch any of the components on here. I'm gonna make sure we get a nice tight seal to our tank. We don't want this coming off at all. We can go ahead and strip back our wires. All right, so like I said before, our blue is going to be our signal wire and our black is going to be our ground. Put this right up in here. Here's our signal wire from our previous system. We're gonna wrap that around. Get to a spot where I can see. And we can just reuse the cap that we had from our old one. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can seal that up with some electrical tape. Now for our black, I'm just going to take a self-tapping screw and a ring terminal and I'm going to tie it right into the frame. All right, now that I've got my black wire grounded to the frame of the chassis here, we can go ahead and do the same thing with our other two strips. So for my freshwater tank, I'm gonna have to also cut off one of the uh, strips here. Uh, we're gonna, like I said before, we cut off the bottom going up as needed. Uh, but for the freshwater tank, we actually don't have to cut any of these tops. So all we have to do is just stick it right on for that one. Uh, for the next one that we're gonna do, it's gonna be our gray. It's the furthest in there by the axles. All I have to do is just chip off that little gray tab. And the gray tank is actually just a little bit taller, so I won't actually have to take off anything on this one. All right, so now that we have our sensors in place down below and they're wired in, we're gonna go ahead and go up inside of our RV and install our wiring harness and our monitor. All right, so as you can see, our fifth wheel here was already set up with a tank sensor, um, but this has our gray, our black, our fresh, our battery, and then also a switch for our pump. So this is the correct monitor that we're gonna use because it has the exact same setup. So let's go ahead and start taking this apart. Now that I have my screws out of my base here, I'm gonna go ahead and take this connector off so I can pull down my monitor. And as you can see on the base, pull a little bit more of this wiring out. Got three different spade connectors for our pump. Take those off. So the next thing we're going to have to do is try and cut a hole out here to fit the body of our monitor because as you can see this is going to be a flush mount. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw up some lines here, get this exactly how I want it, and then we're gonna make our cut. So I lucked out, my painter's tape is exactly the same width as the body of my monitor here. So I kinda just cut a little piece to kinda give me a little outline. And then I'm gonna go ahead with my multi-tool here and just cut out the rest of the hole. All right, now that we have our piece out, you can just go ahead and take a knife, just kind of clean up your hole a little bit, get any of these little burrs right off. And we can just do a quick little test fit even though I got the wires in the way just a bit. Yeah, it'll be fine setting it right there. So, pops right into place, no issue. So we'll go ahead and start hooking up our wires. All right, so these three wires right here are for our pump. And on here, we are going to clip off our wiring running to our old connector. so that we can plug in our new wiring harness. All right, so on our wiring harness for our new monitor, our white is gonna to go to our pump, our red is going to be our power, black is our ground, and blue is our tank sensors. Uh, the old wiring had three separate wires running to our sensors. So this is for our fresh, our black, and our gray tanks. So I'm going to strip this back, splice those all together, and then attach those to my blue wire on my new wiring harness. And then I'm gonna attach my red to my power, which is also red on my new one. And then I'm going to attach my other three cables to my pump. All right, so here's my three tank sensor wires. We're just gonna put these all together because our new system runs just off of one wire. And I'm gonna take my blue wire from my wiring harness for the new sensor or monitor and we are going to run that around that nice and tight i'm going to use a wire nut oh not tight enough apparently twist that on. Then if you want you can go ahead and use some electrical tape. Really make sure that this wire nut isn't going to come off. And then from there we are going to strip back the casing on our white wire here. As you can see this is our ground going to our pump and then they just Spliced another line right into that spade terminal for us to hop over to our monitor with. So we are just going to take that jumper cable and connect it with a butt connector to our ground on our monitor. All right. Next, I'm going to connect my power, which is our little red wire here, to my power on my new harness. All right, the last wire that we have to connect is our white wire right here. And looking at the wiring diagram for our old monitor, it has to connect to our violet wire right here. So I'm actually gonna have to cut this off and splice these wires together and then put a new spade terminal on. All right, I got my two wires spliced together. I'm putting on my new spade terminal now. I'm gonna crimp that down. All right. Now we can begin connecting our spade terminals to our pump on our monitor. As you can see, there's like an open side up on the top. We're gonna put that facing up on our monitor because these little tabs here on the connector are gonna kind of click into the plastic holder piece so that the connector doesn't come off. Next, we will take our power for our pump. We just put it on either the top or the bottom, we'll put our purple wire, which is our sensor to our, or our wire to our sensors. We're gonna put that right in the middle. And then I'm gonna place my ground 
on the top prong. And we can go ahead. And when I hit my battery, it's a reading that our battery voltage is at 13.6. Now we can go ahead and we can fill up our fresh water tank and our gray and black and give you a little reading of those to make sure that the sensors work. All right, now that we have all of our connections made, I'm just gonna hide our wiring back inside of our hole here. All right, now we can go ahead and test our battery. We're reading 13.5 volts are fresh so I actually went ahead and I hooked up and put in some water so this reading that we're getting here for 10 is in percentage so 10% of our sensor is reading right now so our tanks only 10% full and if you want that to stay if you hit it again that little light will pop up there and it'll hold that so that you don't have to keep hitting it uh, so let's check our gray I think I ran that a little bit more yeah so we're at 25% and on our black, I'm just at 10%. All right, so now that we've checked all of our tank levels, let's go ahead and we'll flip on our pump. And as you can see, that little green light comes on and we can flip on our water. So I don't know if you can really hear it, but the tank's going, or the pump's going on in the background. If I flip this off, it cuts the power of the pump. Well, I think that about does it for our installation of the C-Level RV tank monitoring system. My name's Kevin. Thanks for watching.